Hi everyone. So in today's video, we'll discuss about uh, the second part. So in the previous video, I have already explained about the first means the two A that is agent tools. I will talk about agent tools best practices. So in this video, we'll talk about agent tools best practices in detail. So make sure you're watching till end. And so first of all, what is this agent tool patterns and best practices? So in the previous notebook, you learn how to add custom Python function or tools to agent. In this notebook, we'll take the next step, consuming external MCP services and handling long run operations. So let's know what is this, okay? So in this, uh, in this 2 we will know about consuming external MCP services and handling long running operations, okay? So to explain you in a easy manner i have took the help of chart gpt so see in day 2a you learn how to give your ai agent tools like small python function so it could perform specific action that like in the previous one we just gave our ai agent tools like small python functions right that is so in day 2b you will learn how to use those tools more effectively and smartly so in in the day to be we will learn how to use the tools more effectively and smartly so this part focuses on best practices and advanced patterns basically how to make your agent work more efficiently and handle complex tasks so in this notebook we will learn connect to external mcp servers means your agent can use tools that are hosted outside your code such as external apis or services by connecting to the modal context protocol. Okay. Sorry. Next, handle long running operations. When sometimes your agent starts a task that takes time, like waiting for user approval or fetching data, we will learn how to pause the agent work and then resume it once the task is ready. So what they are telling is, uh, so when your agent is uh, performing an action that takes time, like waiting for a uh, some fetching data or something. So then in, we'll learn how to pause the agent work and then resume it once the task is ready. Next, build resumable workflows. Means this allows your agent to remember what it was doing even if the conversation or process is input. Even though conversation is interrupted or disturbed, the agent will remember what it was doing. That is about build re resumable workflows. Kind of like picking up where it left off. And the fourth one is use patterns and best practices. You will understand when and how to use these advanced features to build smarter and more reliable agents. So in short, we can say this 2B teaches you how to make your AI agent more professional, able to work with the external tools, wait when needed, resume smoothly and follow smart design rules. So it behaves like a real intelligent assistant. How to do this? To be assignment. Click on edit my copy. So you will be redirected to this page. And as I already said, before performing this action, you need to generate your secret key. I have already explained how to generate the secret key. So you can check out in my previous videos. So just go to the Google AI to create your API key and come here, click on Add on, then click on Secrets. Then if you are new to this, then what you need to do is just scroll down uh, near enter label. You can enter this as it is. Make sure you copy and pasting it very carefully. And after that near enter value, you can just click on I mean, you can just enter your key value, okay? So, make sure you're, if you're getting like this interface, make sure you're checking this. Because if you don't check this, like, uh, it, if you check, it will be, your key will be safe. And if you if you get this box only, that means you're done with the process. Otherwise, you're not done with the process. So, now let's see, let's understand why this code is for. What is the purpose of this code? Okay. This code securely retrieves and set up your Google API key in tagging. It ensures that your notebook can connect to Google's AI models like Gemini without exposing 
your key publicly. In short, it is used for authentication and save access to Google AI services. The next code is import ADK component. Let's see the use of this. So this code imports all the necessary building blocks from the agent development kit to create a and run your AI agent. It gives you access to tools for handling conversation, connecting external services, managing sessions, and using the Gemini model inside your custom AI agent. In simple words, first code connects your notebook securely to Google AI. Second code brings in all the tools needed to build and run the AI agents. So let's run this code. So click on the run button. So you get like something like setup and authentication complete then you're done with this step. Next import ADK components. Just run this code. So if you get something like ADK components imported successfully, then you're done with this step. Next configure retry options. So this code sets up retry options to make your AI agent more reliable when sending requests to Google's language model, LLM. Sometimes a request might fail temporarily, for example, due to rate limits, like too many requests or server errors like 500, 502, or 504. When you're having such kind of errors or you're being displayed with the numbers like this, then you can uh, run this code. Instead of stopping immediately, this configuration tells the system to automatically try again a few times until you success. So, instead of stopping immediately, it tells the system that after a few, it will start automatically after a few times. And parameters defined, attempt is equal to five, try up to five attempts. Each retry waits longer than the previous one. Retry only for this temporary course. If you get this code only in the other, then try. Okay, so let's run this code. So this will prevent from any errors in upcoming session. So next one is section two, that is model context protocol. So let's understand it in a simple way. So what is model context protocol MCP? So far you have learned how to make your own custom tools for your agent. But if your agent needs to connect to other apps like GitHub, Slack or database, Normally, you would have to write long API code for each one, which is time consuming. That's where important context protocol helps. It's a universal system that lets your AI agent easily connect to external tools and services that other developers have already built without you writing any extra API. So, in short, MCP server provides tools like fetching data, sending messages, and simple. MCP client, your AI agent, which uses those tools, both follow the same standards, so everything connects smoothly. So with MCP, an agent can use drive data from other apps or databases easily. We use community built integrations, expand its power by connecting to many specialized tools. So here, let's discuss about this 2.2 and here, what are the steps here? So I have simplified this. So see, using MCP with your agent, simpli simplified explanation. To make your AI agent use tools from other apps or services through MCP, the process is super simple and happens in a few steps. The first step is choose an MCP server. Think of the MPC server as a place that provides ready-made tools your agent can use. For example, the demo here uses everything MCP server, which is like a sample server for testing. It includes a small tool called Get Tiny Image. It simply gives a tiny test images that is 16 into 16 pixels. In real project, you can use MCP servers that connects to tools like Google Maps, Slack, or Discord. Next, create the MCP toolset. The MCP toolset acts like a bridge between your AI agent and the N MCP server. It helps your agent connect and talk to that server. Here, what the code does. It uses npx node.js command to start the MCP server. Connects to everything MCP server. Choose only the get tiny image tool from that server. So in simple words, this part teaches your agent how to connect to an MCP server. And use one of its tools, just like teaching it how to plug into a new app and fetch something. 